Al Tijak News Channel. The truth fears no questions. Welcome to the Middle East stream, I'm Marwa Osman. The first meeting in the Geneva two round of talks meant to discuss the controversial issue of a Syrian transitional government broke up after less than an hour on Monday following a tense session that one delegate described as a dialogue of the deaf. The Syrian government has said it will not discuss replacing President Bashar Assad, while the opposition insists he must step down in favor of a transitional governing body that would lead the country until elections are held. Now, to discuss the prospects of these talks with us in the studio is Dr. Hilal Khashan, political science professor at AUB. Welcome, welcome with us, My Dr. Pleasure. Khashan. And also via uh, Skype, live uh, from Atlanta, is Mr. Akil Hanano, political analyst from the U.S. Welcome with us, Mr. Hanano. Thank you for having me. Now, let us start by watching this following report. Syrian peace talks in Geneva have reached a deadlock after a session aimed at tackling contentious political issues, including the fighting of terrorism. The UN mediator, Lakhdar Brahimi, told a news conference on Monday that little progress had been made on any front, but discussions would continue on Tuesday. Despite the slow progress, Brahimi said there is still hope, but maintained peace was unlikely to be achieved within days or even weeks. He urged both sides to think about their people. Earlier on Monday, press reports stated that the opposition delegation had rejected the Syrian government's declaration of principles for the Geneva II talks. The declaration states that the Syrian Arab Republic is a democratic state based on sovereign rule of law, independence of the judiciary, protecting national unity and cultural diversity. It also says Syrians have the exclusive right to choose their political system away from any imposed framework or foreign intervention. The Western-backed opposition rejected this declaration while insisting that the regime commits in writing to the Geneva One communique, which calls for a transition process. Rima Freyhan, a member of the opposition National Coalition's delegation, said, The discussions were not constructive today because of the regime's strategy to deflect and change the subject by talking of terrorism. However, Syrian delegation member Buthayna Shaban said the government had presented political principles which no two Syrian persons should disagree with, including protecting the country's sovereignty, preserving state institutions, and stopping the threat from terrorist groups. Officials on both sides said they had no plans to leave the talks, however. The National Coalition said President Bashar al-Assad must leave power and a transitional government be formed based on the agreement reached during a first peace conference in Geneva in 2012. Yet the Syrian delegation says Mr. Assad's role is not up for debate at this conference and denies that the initial Geneva deal requires him to go. Dr. Hashan, uh, so yesterday the talks broke up after the Syrian government delegation set out a statement of principles that did not include a political transition or transitional uh, government, uh, and it, that was why it was rejected by the opposition side now. However, the statement presented political principles which include protecting the country's sovereignty, preserving state institutions, and stopping the threat from terrorist groups. Now, why would the opposition refuse such a statement when they can just demand the addition of transitional government or maybe uh, the statement of a transitional government? Well, the question is, at hand is not the issuance of a docu document either by the government or the opposition. Uh, remember, there is deep-seated apprehension and lack of trust on the two sides. Uh, I don't think uh, the opposition uh, can believe the government or that the government can believe the opposition. We have 
an issue of confidence building. Uh, so uh, I don't think the time is right uh, for reaching an agreement. Uh, uh, what was presented by the government is a blueprint for further de negotiations and probably uh, uh, something to work on in future meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I can relate to that, but the point yeah. is, when there are certain points that include uh, protecting a country's sovereignty or fighting or countering terrorism, mm -hmm. why would the opposition refuse that at a okay. time when yeah. they are suffering from uh, terrorism inside the country as well? Yeah, y you know, you take any country's constitution. I cannot think of any constitution that does not make reference to the people as the source of all legislation that doesn't talk about sovereignty, etc., etc. Yet, in many countries, uh, the terms of the, the clauses of the constitution are frequently violated, and uh, that's why it is difficult for anybody to take a document at face value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if uh, there is lack of trust on the, on the part of the two sides. It's difficult for one to accept a document because they feel that it can be easily violated. Mm -hmm. Well, let us uh, go to Atlanta then and ask Mr. Hanano about uh, the government uh, delegation's paper. They put forward a paper yesterday focusing on the need to combat terrorism, as we just said, and to halt uh, funding and shipments of weapons into Syria. Now, uh, Syrian delegate Buthayna Shaban called the paper an expression of good will. Now, let's say it is an expression of good will. However, why didn't the paper include a point about transitional governing or simply early elections for that matter? Well, and, and the way I see it, to be honest with you, it's not a matter of uh, to a transition government or not. I, uh, the legislator presented the Syrian Arab government uh, had any trust or recognition mm -hmm. of the opposition sitting in front of them. They know those people don't have the power to say yes or no. They know those people has to go back to their backers to get their approval, and that's the only reason the opposition refused that paper. The transition government, or the President Assad, it's a solely a decision made by the Syrian people. And the delegation before it got declared that openly. They are not here coming to discuss any transition uh, government or replacement of uh, President Assad. Whether you like him or not, this is a decision has to be made inside the country by the people of the country, pallet box. And I don't understand if the opposition are seeking a freedom and press, why don't they agree to that pallet box mm -hmm. well, and let the people decide who their president is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, Dr. Hashan, uh, taking from what uh, Mr. Hanano just said, the opposition also called the paper a deviation from the main goal of the talks, which in their uh, point of view aims at a transitional government. But the fact is on the ground, the main priority uh, is to reinforce security and maybe uh, stability and provide humanitarian aid for the Syrian people. Now, how can a transitional government secure such points when not we're not making, uh, I mean, statements about whether they should help or not. They should sit down and talk about giving help for the Syrian people, and yet they still emphasize on the need for a transitional government. Why is that? Uh, you see, uh, I mean, I don't think the opposition is capable of reaching terms uh, on a transitional government, even without uh, uh, intervention on the part of the government. You know, as you know, the Syrian opposition is hopelessly divided, and those who went uh, to Geneva too, were not of one persuasion and a large number of opposition figures chose to stay out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, even if the, I mean, let's say, even if th those present at Geneva too on the part of the opposition were to agree on something, uh, people on the ground uh, may not like that and most likely they will not heed uh, such an agreement. Uh, you know, the, 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 I mean, uh, the situation within the opposition is so complex that even if those in Geneva were to, ac uh, were to accept it, you know, most others would not. So it's not a question of agreeing on something. The question is making sure that those who represent the opposition 
and those who stayed out agree on one thing, and this is highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. Well, we will talk later yeah. about whether the, any, uh, any kind of agreement in Geneva will actually affect anything on the ground or not. But let sure. us go back to Mr. Hanano and ask him about uh, what's going on right now in Geneva. It, it was uh, the inability of the two sides to discuss uh, President Assad's future was actually expected that they will not yield any uh, good grounds for outcomes. However, UN mediator Lakhdar Brahimi managed to get both sides uh, to sit in the same room over the weekend for once to discuss humanitarian aid to the besieged areas of uh, Syria and a possible prisoner exchange as well. Now, how likely do you think progress will be made on those, uh, on th those two main issues at, at a time when they refuse to hear one another? Well, this is, like I said, this is uh, for the opposition more than the government. Everybody knows is uh, in control of what and what they are able to do and what they are capable of not doing. Mm -hmm. The problem is those people sitting, claiming to be representative of people, are they able, as the doctor said, to um, reach between the two parties? I really don't think so. I think this whole delegation came in on backing of the country who created them and they have no real power on the ground and that's where the hesitation comes from the government delegation to make any deal with them because that deal cannot be honored by the people on the ground and part of the reason also the delegation who are sitting in Geneva right now has an opposition within themselves mm -hmm. to any decision they make so there is no food for this meeting and I I could see it that Geneva is not going to accomplish anything. The only thing Geneva accomplished is an opening dialogue secretly between uh, Secretary of State Walid Mali and uh, the, the foreign uh, delegation in there with behind the scene. And what we are seeing on, on the TV between Bashar Jafari and the opposition delegation is just they're talking and trying to accomplish something while something else is being struck behind the scene. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Dr. Hashan, uh, yeah. uh, concerning the aid uh, delivery to the besieged areas of uh, Syria, the opposition accused the authorities yesterday of blocking a convoy of 12 trucks trying to get into yeah. the embattled uh, city of Homs. However, we have voices from uh, Homs Governor Talal uh, Barazi, who is saying that the only obstacle facing the flow of uh, food and, uh, and aid into uh, the uh, uh, armed uh, groups held areas are uh, some cases of snipers fire by terrorist groups that's how he put it into words now what yeah. can tell uh, how can you it, explain to us about the possibility of armed groups actually abiding to any sort of ceasefire that can be brought up in Geneva you know again there's a gap between those present in Geneva those who are talking about uh, uh, bringing in uh, supplies to besieged people in Homs and elsewhere and the fighters on the ground and that like as I mentioned earlier you know there is no guarantee uh, actually odds are uh, against uh, uh, having those in the battlefield uh, coming to terms with those present in Geneva you know there is a gap between the people in Geneva and uh, uh, the fighters on the ground uh, again, the situation in, uh, in, in Syria among the opposition is so complex that we don't know. I mean, even within one geographical area, there are different groups that do not coordinate among themselves. And it is very easy for uh, even an unruly element uh, I mean, uh, or anybody, as a matter of fact, to ensure the failure of an agreement. As long as there is no central command, it's difficult to put things in order and ensure a... But I mean, uh, yeah. there is a central command that can influence these groups. It's the command that's actually arming and financing these groups. And it is actually, a lot of them are present at Geneva. So why not just sit on the table and talk to them? Well, I don't think uh, uh, those who are supporting the rebels are interested in uh, cease fire right now in putting an end to the conflict. They believe that there's a lot more to the fighting to be done before an agreement uh, is reached. Uh, they see Geneva too as an exercise that would eventually lead the way to Geneva 3 and uh, maybe uh, uh, Geneva 4, etc. Uh, so uh, it is difficult to talk about 
anything achieved uh, in Geneva too. So, and so we no, can no. say that the scene in Syria is now uh, a lot being um, exposed to the scene of uh, the Lebanese civil war that uh, occurred in the 80s? Yeah, I, I think the most important achievement in, G in Geneva too is bringing the two sides together. That in itself is a remarkable achievement. We shouldn't really expect much beyond it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, in, in Lebanon in 1984, uh, the Swiss government uh, in invited the various uh, parties to the conflict in Lebanon to Lausanne, and they had protracted meetings, and they achieved nothing because the conditions in Lebanon and in the region were not yet conducive for reaching an agreement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it took years uh, until an agreement. So you do anticipate that more years to come are uh, uh, for the battlefield to be clear in order for Geneva to actually be successful? Uh, I, I hope we will not have to wait for a uh, more, few more years, but I don't think the conditions uh, in the battlefield, the conditions on the ground, and uh, the conditions among the various shades of the opposition are yet uh, ready for uh, comprehensive talks, meaningful talks that can lead to an agreement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Hanano, I want to take your, uh, your thoughts on what Dr. Khashan uh, uh, just said about it would take much more time for Geneva to actually succeed. What are your thoughts about that? I really don't see any Geneva will succeed. Mm -hmm. The only success the Syrian government and the Syrian people will have is an internal dialogue. An opposite within the country, dialoguing. Now, everybody knows you, they are scared of arrest, they are scared of kidnapping, they are scared of being dead or killed. Well, every single person who is dying today in Syria because of this conflict has more value to his family than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand the logic that I'm not going to be able to go to the country to dialogue with the government. I'm going to stay out support from the outsider and then pretend to be represented or suffering inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dialogue has to be internal. It has to be Syrian, facing Syrian, sitting on the same table, talking to each other, stopping all the influence of the outsider. Nobody cares about Syria. I don't see Saudi Arabia or Qatar or United champion of peace. This is just a joke. Mm -hmm. It's a joke. They well, are the ones supporting all the... Well, uh, gentlemen, we will the continue... The uh, today and now they approve... Excuse me, uh, Dr. Hanano, Mr. Hanano, but we will continue our thoughts for, uh, for uh, Geneva, but we have to take our first break for tonight. Please stay tuned. We will be right back. Time. Volume. Events. The only constant variable in life is change. Broader perspective. Arguments and counter arguments on our platform. Global insights. The globe on our platform. Pollution and climate change. Medicine manipulation. Genetically modified food. The destruction of wildlife and corporate exploitation. These are all part of the new terrorism threatening our future. Eco-terrorism. Global awakening to a world under threat. We are back with the Middle East stream with Dr. Hilal Khashan, political science professor at AUB, and Mr. Rakil Hanano, political analyst from Atlanta. Now, the Geneva II conference is the most intriguing diplomatic event since the Cold War era. On the one hand, it is an example of cooperation between major players, primarily, primarily uh, Russia and the U.S., which each, for reasons of its own, want to resolve a regional conflict. Now, on the other hand, it's a big game in which all the players are afraid of making a miscalculation or missing out on something. Now, add to that the total unpredictability, not only with the outcome, but the process, too. More details on the following report. 
The much-anticipated Geneva II conference has proven since it opened on January 22nd that its significance is not going to lie in its formal outcomes as much as in its behind-the-scenes talks. The conference has not only emphasized the wide political gap between rival stakeholders in the Syria conflict, but also that between their expectations from Geneva II itself. For the Syrian government, Geneva II has been an opportunity to validate the counter-terrorism narrative that has been flaming the war on Syria. The government's participation is driven by its expectation of succeeding in countering terrorism and consequently keeping President Bashar al-Assad in power. The Syrian National Coalition, on the other hand, sees in Geneva II the start of a process of political transition involving the departure of President Assad. That each side has come to Geneva too with different goals is not surprising, but it also emphasizes the difficulty of conducting negotiations in the absence of common ground for having negotiations in the first place. Further complicating matters are the growing internal divisions within the opposition, particularly after the departure of the Syrian National Council from the coalition. This makes any agreement reached through Geneva II lacking in broad representation and also difficult to implement. Implementation is further hindered by the presence of foreign-backed armed groups, especially extremists who have been both a product and producers of the conflict. Finding a political solution to the conflict is not in the interest of these groups. Even increased humanitarian aid and localized truces and ceasefires, the best formal outcomes one can hope for as a result of Geneva II, are likely to be undermined by these groups. But outside of its formal proceedings, the conference has been the first platform to bring together the government, the opposition, and their respective international backers in the same space and thus the opportunity for conducting informal multilateral conversations behind closed doors. Those conversations are hinting at the likelihood of future convergence between the United States and Russia with regard to President Bashar al-Assad himself, despite their current divergent public statements about the issue. Let us start now by uh, talking to Mr. Hanano there about what happened today in Geneva. Mr. Hanano, peace talks broke off uh, early today in Geneva as well as a result of a deadlock concerning the way Geneva 1 is actually comprehended by rival uh, groups. That at a time when, according to Reuters, U.S. Uh, congressmen secretly approved sending arms, an assorted variety of rockets, and financial backing to so-called moderate uh, armed groups fighting inside Syria. Now, why the approval at this moment in time by the Congress, and is it an early declaration that Geneva too is actually failing? Well, I think this is only a rhetoric to put more pressure on the government delegation. Everybody knows the arm uh, flow to the rebels never stop. CIA is uh, never waited on the Congress approval to do anything abroad outside the country. And like I said, this is just a political pressure from the United States to the delegation uh, of the Syrian Arab Republic to give up some of its position. And uh, the, the, the reason for, for this, people have to know who are they negotiating with. Mm -hmm. The other side, the opposition, everybody knows what the Syrian government stands for, whether you agree with it, with it or not. It's, it's a clear position, and they declared it from day one before they even came to Geneva, what's their condition, what they're going to do. The problem with the other side, nobody knows where they stand. Nobody knows what they are capable of providing. Nobody knows whether they are able to implement any of the agreement reached in Geneva. And to me, all the demand from the Syrian delegation is a test to the Syrian opposition, whether they're going to be able to do uh, that or not. 
And the paper submitted by, by the Syrian delegation to the opposition, mm -hmm. like Hussein Shaban said, there is no two people could disagree on it. It's the principle of sovereignty. And if they cannot even agree to the principle of sovereignty, how are we sitting, talking to them about replacing the leadership of the country, being mm -hmm. the president, the government, or, or, or the regime, as they call it? This is, has gone beyond the, the, the person of Assad. It's what Assad represents which is the whole government and the whole system and the whole power and the army of the Syrian Arab Republic. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. thing has to be decided internally. It has to be decided by the pallet uh, box. And I don't see any reason why the uh, Syrian uh, government should even sit and negotiate the future of the country in Geneva. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Dr. Hashan, taking from what uh, Mr. Hanano just said, uh, according to Syrian delegate Buthana Shaban, the reason for breaking off today's talks uh, was because the opposition actually backed the U.S.'s decision to arm and finance the armed groups inside Syria. Now, why would the opposition delegation back such a de decision at a time when both parties are desperately trying to find a political solution to the crisis in Syria? Well, it's not just that they are backing the U.S congressional declaration actually they have been for long pleading for military assistance from the west and other countries uh, uh, like mr hanano has just said you know uh, the decision to announce uh, i mean the decision to announce the supply of rebels with military assistance came during the conference in order to apply pressure on the syrian government uh, to make concessions that's all to it you know so it's, it's just a question of timing mm -hmm. well but if they want to yeah. apply pressure on the regime, they might use some other cards, not actual uh, cards of arming and financing the groups. That would just put Geneva as, a, as if it's for nothing. As <coughs> Absolutely it's correct. Not, it's nonsense. You said that nobody had any illusions about what Geneva II could achieve. Uh, there is nothing more to Geneva II than, exer than an exercise in diplomacy and uh, bringing the two sides together. Keep in mind, the two sides agendas are completely incompatible and they have not a single common denominator. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there is not a chance to expect anything from Geneva too. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mr. Hanano, Syrian Deputy Foreign Minister Faisal al Magdad uh, accused today uh, the U.S. of deliberately trying to thwart any political agreement in Geneva by arming and financing uh, the armed groups in Syria. Those are his words. Now, how do you think the U.S. stance will affect the outcome of Geneva too next week or this week? I'm sorry, how, how is that? I, I how the how will part. the decision of uh, the U.S. Congress to actually finance and arm uh, the opposition, how will it affect uh, Geneva too? Well, I, I really don't see any effect. Everybody knows the outcome of Geneva too. Nobody went there with the false impression that we're going to succeed in Geneva too. Everybody knows, as the doctor said, this is an exercise of exploring, exploring the other side, see what the other side demand are, and then reacting to it at a later date. No decision will be made in Geneva II right now. Geneva II is just an, an, an exploratory uh, monitor. Everybody trying to find out where they stand, how tough their stand is, and what they are willing to compromise. And that, by the way, does not come from the opposition player. It comes from their master. As we heard on the news, every time after the meeting, the opposition group goes to uh, Ambassador Ford, uh, Sweet, and discuss the event and gets from him the order for next day the, the, uh, discussion. They are even bringing the demand at the discussion point written in English. Nothing has been submitted in Arabic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a mockery. It's really a mockery of the whole system but, of being but in a position. Don't you think that such a, a, such a decision? Don't you think such a decision by the uh, U.S. Congress would pressurize the uh, government delegation into maybe putting a transition in government on their schedule? No, I, I don't think it will, because the Syrian government also knows the detail, and they know even during the delegation uh, arriving into Geneva, the arm also was arriving into Syria. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with that. And I don't think after three years of war and standing up to the whole world now because of some uh, some arms coming to Syria, the delegation or the Syrian government will back down from, from any stand they had. I don't think uh, it will affect it, and it should not affect it. This is part of the game, and we are at the end of the game, and everybody knows this is uh, the beginning of writing the end of the story of the Syrian conflict, God mm -hmm. willing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Dr. Hashan, um, the Russian delegation...